Navajo Nation encompasses 17 million acres. It is the largest reservation in the United States with a population of over 350,000 people. 32% of Navajo Nation homes are not electrified. At the current rate of 700 or so new connections a year, it will take over 35 years to power the entire territory. Those who would benefit the most from electrification are elders who desire modern conveniences but live in unconnected areas. Grid Alternatives and Fort Lewis College are in their second year of partnership in bringing solar installations to the Navajo Nation. The systems installed can defray or even eliminate electricity bills for the recipients. And in a community with 43% of its people living below the poverty line, such assistance is needed. We're at the Counselor Chapter House in just north of Cuba, New Mexico, on the Navajo uh, Nation. I'm here with a team of six engineering students that this has been their year-long senior design project, um, assessing, sizing, and designing the system here at the Chapter House and uh, three Navajo residences that will start tomorrow. We also are joined by eight FLC students from a variety of disciplines um, volunteering their time over spring break. Well, there's, um, there's a few goals and, and I think that's what's so neat about it, how it all intersects. And one is certainly um, to help the community, both with um, getting off of fossil fuel energy and also helping them economically. Uh, last year that when we installed this uh, array, the, the chapter house barely uh, has had to spend any money on their bills. In fact, the manager said they're getting a credit back from their electricity bill. So it's to help economically, um, it's to help environmentally uh, for the community, but also it's about job training for our Fort Lewis College students. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock, you'll have another session. Well, get a good night's sleep, hopefully you have fun. Um, and uh, we'll see you all in the morning. Again, the coal mines, the royalties, that pays for the tribal government and that eventually gets distributed out to the local chapter. And on the other side, they have, uh, I think it's Diné Care. They're having their own advertisements talking about we need to transition to renewables and stuff like that. So again, you, you hear, you'll hear both sides uh, if you turn on the KTNN, which again is, the, you guys all know, it's Nav one of the Navajo uh, radio stations. bringing uh, affordable energy to people who need it. The fossil fuels that we kind of rely on right now are um, finite. We're going to run out at some point. And, um, it'd be great if we got off of them before we actually ran out. And renewable energy and sustainability is super important to me and I think it's one of the key things that we should be focusing on if we plan to move forward in you know a positive way. I kind of have this theory that when you're closer to nature that you're kind of closer to yourself. The big challenge has just been working with a larger group and um, it's a year-long project and there's a lot that goes into it. 
I've learned just a ton and I've just I've been able to really uh, figure out my path. To be honest, it's not a bad way to spend uh, to spend a couple of days. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, it's fun getting to spend time with people from my major who, you know, I've seen them around, but now I'm actually getting to know them. Um, and it's fun getting to see another side of my professors, that's for sure. I'm Navajo, so I'm happy because I'm getting to be a part of my community. This is impacting my culture and the people that I know. The size of the college is one of the things where you get more time with your professors, you get more experience, you're just a little bit more involved as compared to probably a university. Solar spring break is one of the things you have to experience, whether you're an engineering major like me or anyone else who's interested in this type of work and just volunteering too. It's great for spring break. <laughs>